live to Brussels now to speak to our correspondent Shona Murray, who's been listening from the from Brussels as well, live in the bridge. Shona, gosh, so many different themes, priorities that Ursula von der Leyen got into speaking to for us for over an hour, talking about economic recovery, climate concerns, digital innovation, rule of law. She kept saying, though, this theme, it's going to be the next generation EU. What is she talking about? Who does she mean? Well, she's talking, of course, in relation to the 750 billion euro rescue package that was agreed amongst the member states and how that will be brought forward and how that will be used to ensure the future of Europe, specifically in the area of uh, green bonds and saying that 30 percent of the bonds that come from the 750 billion rescue fund will have to be on green areas. She talked about, you know, looking at what's happening in places like Portland, Oregon, and also in parts of Europe, in Romania, for example, where there's huge droughts, saying that Europe needs to lead when it comes to global warming and has changed uh, the ambition for Europe in this area. So really that's the, that's, that was part of what she was talking about in relation to uh, the Green Deal. I mean, you know, we talked earlier, Rosie, that there's going to be a wide gamut of issues that were going to be facing her that she'd want to touch on, and she really did touch on pretty much all of them. Of course she couldn't go into the level of detail required, which may come fall down as a criticism because, um, as I spoke to some MEPs while it was ongoing, that they were saying that some it sounds like platitudes. She spoke for around an hour and 20 minutes. The first half, at least the first half, maybe more, was in relation to COVID, about the EU's response to COVID, about living with COVID, and how COVID has impacted on people's lives. She, she says, you know, a virus a thousand times smaller than a grain of sand exposed just how fragile life is. Uh, and that really was about, so she reflected, I suppose, how people are feeling around COVID, but she tried to say, look, we'll move forward, we'll invest a lot of money when it comes to vaccines, and we will ensure that there's a stockpile of medicines, uh, of medical equipment, so that in a, in, a, in a situation like this, you know, we won't be found wanting. And then one of the other issues, which may be controversial from a member state point of view, was she said that she wants to, there to be greater competence for Brussels in the area of health. And we spoke about this earlier as well, Rosie. The EU doesn't have competence when it comes to health. It's, a, it's an issue of member state competence. So she'll be wanting for Brussels to have more control. That could require treaty change. And at a time when, you know, there's quite a bit of divergence in the EU, that may be difficult to get across the line. Something she did do was reiterate climate commitments. And she's come under criticism that there's often uh, quite a lot of commitment and then not very much action when it actually comes to the green credentials of the EU. How did she reiterate those promises? And what are then her priorities when it comes to, to climate change over the next year? Mm. Well, she wants to ensure that all member states are living up to what is committed in the Paris Accord. And she said that the EU initially wanted to have uh, climate neutrality by 2050, uh, but that, of course, has now been to 2030, so she's raised the ambitions there. But she also said that this not, may not be supported by all member states. And we know that at the very start of the Green Deal issue, uh, when, it, when it first came to the table, countries like Poland weren't supportive. They didn't even uh, vote in favour of it. So she promised that there would be some help, some form of better form of transition funding for those economies that do rely uh, on coal uh, and other non-renewable sources. But she cited some examples, for example, one situation in Sweden where a steel factory is, is being uh, fueled completely without coal and through renewable sources. So she said this is the future and this is what the EU needs to do and also this is how the EU can make money as well. At the latter part of her speech, Jenna, she was really talking about the identity of Europe, particularly when it comes to racism, equality across the continent. What did she have to say there and why do you think it was important for her to make that message very clear? Yeah, this was really the, so the, the third third of the um, of the part of the speech where she dealt with sort of societal issues, and she she quoted John Hume, one of the world's greatest peacemakers, who was also a former MEP here in Brussels, uh, where he said that conflict was about difference, but peace was about respecting difference. And she went on to say, you know, that the Roma community, for example, in the EU is tra treated terribly; that many uh, people of different ethnic backgrounds are treated terribly. She did talk about the migrant issue, which, as we know, is a huge 
huge problem in, in Europe, mainly because there is no consensus among member states on how to deal with it. But she said that it's not optional to not rescue people in the sea, which we know that that's a huge debate, which is interesting because the EPP, the European People's Party, you have to remember, voted against a resolution in the European Parliament uh, just a few months ago that would allow uh, the insurance that people were collected from the sea, rescued from the sea. So, you know, she's going against somewhat what the EPP have voted for there. Um, but she said that really the EU has to be a, a place of humanity, of values, of principles. Similarly with the rule of law and some of the other member states like Turkey, or sorry, like Hungary and Poland, which have moved away from uh, adherence to the rule of law and seem to be very problematic when it comes to these issues. In particular, she touched on Poland. There was a debate in the parliament around Poland this week specifically because of some of the, um, the ideology coming from there, which lambastes people who are LGBTI. She said LGBTI zones, where there are in Poland, there are communities literally in Poland which say that they're LGBTI free. She said that's humanity free. And she said that, that wouldn't be supported, that wouldn't be the place uh, for any, any, any member state to move away from European values in that regard. So there was a lot there for everybody. Rosie, I think, you know, people would say, well, look, this all sounds great, but at the same time, you know, how is she going to do it? Because we've heard this in the past around racism, about a uh, lack of equality. So I think people would need to want to see the meat and the bones. Well, we're going to go to Italy very shortly and speak about the reaction to some of the things von der Leyen said about migration. Just finally and quickly from you, uh, Shona, it was something we knew would come up over the last hour. And that was, of course, the issue of Brexit, a very thorny one that's got even more complicated in the last week. And von der Leyen was really issuing a, a, a new commitment, but also, again, a bit of a warning to the UK about what their relationship could be like if they don't play ball. Yeah, exactly. Um, and that was something that everybody was looking out for. How, how strong is she going to be here at a very delicate time of the negotiations? But she said the withdrawal agreement cannot be breached, uh, you know, cannot be disapplied. It is international law. And of course, the EU wants to have a deal with the UK. But she said the chances of that are fading and I think she was very clear and she also made a commitment to MEPs that she would give them as much information, up-to-date information as to how the negotiations are going and of course she, she quoted Margaret Thatcher, uh, a great supporter of the single market. In the UK people would say that Th Margaret Thatcher created the single market uh, where she said the UK does not breach international law or international treaties and I think she's reminding I suppose the Tory party of today who uh, you know, would obviously have a, a great love for Margaret Thatcher, to remember those words uh, when they decide to resile or override some of the commitments they've made to the EU in the past few months. Rosie? And we'll have more on that in the next hour. Shona, thank you ever so much. Doing an incredible job following all of the different thorny parts of policy that uh, von der Leyen just laid out for us. Speaking to us from the bridge there in Brussels, we'll check back in with you in a few minutes. Shona, thank you. Well, some politicians have been keeping...